Finally, this is interesting. Inventory didn't really bounce back. This is the beginning of the fall pullback. Next week is going to be the answer to that question. But at this point, I'm thinking that the answer is yes. It's begun, except for the condo market, that is. But more of that in a moment. And right around the corner from next week is the election week. That's going to answer a lot of unanswered questions and will provide a little more certainty to an uneasy market. Anyone else excited for this all to come to an end? In this video, we're going to go over the single family condo market in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do a quick interest rate update. And we're going to talk about some relevant current events. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker, turned real estate agent, and real estate investor that has sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions about real estate, then no, I'm here to help. A client of ours just closed using the Purchase Power Plan. He ended up spending $3,500 on our real estate services when buying a house. This is compared to the 2.5% of $500,000 his purchase price, or $12,500 that he would have paid using the traditional buyer agency model. He saved nine grand. Want to save thousands, possibly tens of thousands of dollars? on your home purchase, then reach out. Let's talk about the purchase power plan. Let's jump into the single family market sets. Inventory is down. I was wrong thinking that the inventory being down last week was due to Columbus Day. As I said, it's looking like the fall pullback has started. We now have 5,768 single family homes on the market. This is 0.69% fewer homes in the market than just 28 days ago. Calling all buyers. There are some amazing opportunities out there. You just need to know where to look. The year-over-year -year inventory levels show an interesting trend line. It's looking like we started the fall pullback about two weeks earlier than we compared to 2022 and 2023. We now have 1,036 more houses on the market when compared to the same week last year. And this is down from 1,140 units last week, so another pretty big drop. And we now have 173 more houses on the market when compared to 2022. We listed 1,001 single-family homes this week, which is 935 homes this week last year. This means that we were 66 units, or 7.1% higher than the levels we saw in 2023. The forward rolling average is 1,813 units. Under agreements, they drop, but we're still higher than what we saw in 2023. This week, we put 974 single-family homes under agreement. This is 116 units, so 13.5% more than the same week last year. We put 858 homes under agreement, and that forward rolling average, that's 1,042 units. So compared to last year's market, new listings were up by 7.1%, while under agreements, they were up by 13.5%. The pending to new listing ratio jumped this week. The ratio of 99.1% compared to the 84.5% that we saw this week last year. What this means is that a little over 99% of all properties that came on the market two weeks ago went under agreement last week. There were 730 single family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $799,000 and a median sales price of $660,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were up by 175 units or 31.5%. There were 555 single family houses that sold last year for an average sales price of $724,000. Months of inventory. This is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months, that's considered the seller's market. With the closer you get to zero, then the more aggressive and stronger the seller's market that it is. This week, months of inventory ticked up to 1.86 months. This is 1.86 months this week as compared to the 1.59 months this week last year. The gap between this year and last year fell slightly from last week to 0.27 months. The market continues to tighten just a little bit and continues to become a little bit stronger for sellers. Real quick, get to my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now, onto the condo market, which is seeing a little bit of a different pattern than the single family market, at least so far. We now have 3,315 condos on the market as of Monday. This means that there were 5.4% more inventory on the market today than the inventory levels just 28 days ago. We now have 694 more units on the market today than today last year. This is up from last week's 653 units. We had 461 more houses than compared to the inventory levels of 2022 and 408 more than in 2021. This was a big week for new listings. There were 522 condos that came on the market last week with that four-week rolling average of 517 units. 522 units list was 103 units or 24.6% more than the 419 units that came on the market the same week back in 2023. This week we put 355 units under agreement. This 355 condo sales is 17 units or 5% more than the 338 condos that we put under agreement this week last year. At four week rolling average for under agreements, that's 415 units. So 24.6% more listings came on the market compared to this week last year while selling 5% more condos. And there's, that's why inventory is growing right there. The condo pending's new listing levels jumped, which does make sense as it's compared to last week, which saw a decrease in under agreements due to Columbus Day. 
This week, Pendant's new listing ratio is 92.7%. This is compared to the 70% that we saw this time last year. I foresee this level going back down to that 70% range that we've really seen for the last month or so. There are 299 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $653,000 and a median sales price of $558,000. This same week last year, there were 234 condos that sold with an average sales price of $747,000. So sales levels were up by 27.8%. Here continues to be the stat that is really telling about the overall health of the condo market. Months of inventory increased to 2.73 months this week compared to 2.59 months that we recorded last week. This is compared to the 2.16 months of inventory levels this week last year and the year-over-year -year inventory level spread increased to 0.57 months. And as you can do me a huge favor, can you hit that like button? It's right down there. Believe it or not, it just makes a huge difference with, to me as well as the channels. It just plays with that YouTube algorithm. Time to talk about interest rates. And boy, is there a lot to talk about here. The rough patch for interest rates continues. Another up week. Up a lot. In the last month, they are up nearly three quarters of a point. The silver lining is that they're still down more than 1% from this time last year. I was at a meetup last night, and I'm on record disagreeing with the consensus that interest rates are going to fall. I've given them many reasons why, but quick recap. Inflation is going to go back up. The Fed cut too early and is doing so very well. Might have thrown gas on a simmering fire. But this guy, who's seen as an expert, was talking about how the trend has started and that the Fed will keep cutting rates. He wouldn't say where he saw levels going, but he said that they're going to continue to go down. Down. I don't see it. People waiting for the magic bullet are going to continue to wait disappointment. If you're waiting to buy because you've been told that interest rates are going down way down, then you are going to be waiting for much longer and see many more opportunities just pass you by. And did you see this? Massachusetts was right. It's the number one place to live in the country, followed by Florida, New Jersey, Utah, and then our friends up north, New Hampshire. Massachusetts is ranked as the best state to live in thanks to its strong health care and high quality education system. Massachusetts has the lowest premature death rate in the country while having the lowest share of adults in fair or poor health. It also has the highest share of residents with health insurance coverage at 97.3%. The number one school system comes with the fourth best high school graduation rate in the country. We have the third highest median household income at $94,000. And I found the third highest median household income kind of interesting because we were tied for the fifth lowest in average weekly work hours. We also had the third lowest property crime rate and were ranked as the third best access to public transportation. And it's good that our median income is so high because we were ranked as 44th on the affordability ranking for housing. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Again, it's Jeff Chubb. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a house in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. And if you know of anyone that's thinking about buying or selling a house, then I truly appreciate you passing along my contact information. You can reach me at youtuberealestateagent.com or find all my contact information in the description below right down there. Until next time.